In our ongoing video series, we've been talking about defining some basic networking terms, and then we got to see how they went about determining what made up a Class A, Class B, and a Class C network. Now in this video, we're going to see how we go about creating subnets. Now why do we even do it? This allows you to take one large network and break it into smaller networks, or break up one large broadcast domain into smaller broadcast domains. Now some of the benefits of doing that are reduced network traffic. I can isolate noisy parts of my network from other parts of my network, thereby decreasing network traffic. That gives me optimized network performance. Also simplified management, which means that I can troubleshoot much easier in a subnet than I can on the entire network, especially if you're trying to isolate a particular problem. Now facilitated spanning of large geographical distances is also a benefit. Now how do we go about creating these subnetworks? You take bits from the host portion of the IP address and reserve them to define the subnet address. That's all. That's it. Means fewer bits for the host and the more subnets the fewer bits available for defining host. Now we're going to be using the power of two to determine all of this. All right. But before we get into actually creating our subnet our subnet mask for our network, we're going to have to come up with a formula to help us determine exactly what we got to have. Now I have basically three steps outlined for us here. Step number one, determine the number of required network IDs. I need one for each subnet. I got to have one for each wide area network connection. Step number two, determine the number of required host IDs per subnet. One for each TCP IP host and one for each router interface. Now based on that criteria, I should be able to create one subnet mask for our entire network, a unique subnet ID for each physical segment, and a range of host IDs for each subnet. Now again, we're going to be using the power of two. So what does this power of two actually represent to us? Well, the power of two means that I'm going to multiply two times itself with the value that it sits to the right of it. For instance, 2 to the power of 3 equals 8. 2 times 0 is 1, 2 times 1 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, and of course 2 times 4 is 8. That's how we come up with that. Now, if I told you that 2 to the fifth power equals 32, what would the 32 represent to you? What does that mean? That means that I have the possibility of having 32 of something. But what else does that 5 represent to the right of the 2? The 5 represents the number of bits we're going to take from the host portion. Going from left to right, we're going to start taking bits from the host portion of the IP so that we can create our subnets. Now, 2 to the 5th power means that I have a total possibility of having 32 subnets if I take 5 bits from the host portion. Now, what is the value of those 5 bits? Going from left to right, we know that the first bit is or has a value that is a decimal value of 128. The second bit has a decimal value of 64 third bit 32, fourth bit 16, the fifth bit 8. Now I have a total possibility of having 32 subnets. What is the total decimal value of those five bits? For the subnet address scheme to work, every machine on the network must know which part of the host address will be used as the subnet address. This is a 32-bit value that allows the recipient of IP packets to distinguish the network ID portion of the IP address from the host ID portion of the IP address. And not all networks even need to have subnets. I can basically get it by with the default subnet mask if I fall within certain ranges. So if I only got one network or just a few networks, I can basically get by with just using the default subnet mask. Now for the Class A, I've got a lot of room to work with. And for a Class B, I also have a lot of room to work with. With the Class C, I've only got that last octet. So you gotta, you got to be careful. If you only got a couple or three or four networks, you're probably going to be okay. But you're still probably better off subnetting. 
Now subnetting a class C address is what we're going to focus on here. That means I only have eight bits from the last octet of that class C IP address to work with, right? Now what does that mean in decimal and binary? In binary it looks like this. If I take one bit from the host portion, my subnet mask is going to be 255.255.255.128. You take two bits, you add them together. That is to say I take 128 and 64. My default subnet mask is now going to be 192. Take three bits, add them together, 224. Take the decimal value of four bits, add them together from left to right, it will equal 240. And five bits, add that together, and it's 248. Is that what you came up with in our last slide? You cannot have only one bit for subnetting, since that would mean that the bit would always be either off or on, which would be illegal. So the first legal subnet mask in a Class C network you can legally use is 192. And the last one that you can legally use is 252 because I've got to have at least two bits to define host. If you only got one bit, what does that equal when you use the power of 2? 2 to the power of 0 is 0. Nope. No bit, no host. So I've got to have at least two bits to work with. Now we're going to make a custom subnet mask. Now to get a valid subnet mask, we need to answer five simple questions. How many subnets do I need? How many valid hosts do I need per subnet? And we're going to answer those last three questions as well. What are the valid subnets I have to work with? What are the valid host in each subnet that I can have? And what is the broadcast address of each subnet? Those last three questions will be answered when we answer the first two. So let's say we have a network IP of 192.168.35. Now we're going to answer those five questions one at a time. How many subnets do I need? I have determined for my network I want 25 subnets. How many valid hosts do I need per subnet? I'll say that I need four. Now these last three questions again will be answered when I've come up with the numbers for the first two. Now determine how many bits we must take from the host portion. I told you that I needed 25 subnets. Using the power of 2, what is the first increment that we can work with? 2 to the fifth power. That gave me a total possibility of having 32 subnets. Can't use 2 to the fourth power. Only gives me 16. 25 falls in between 16 and 32, so I have to go up to the next higher value, which is 2 to the fifth power equals 32. You subtract the first one and the last one, or subtract 2, and that gives you a total possibility of 30 good subnets. Again, let's refer back to the power of 2 chart. 2 to the fifth power equals 32. And what does that 5 represent one more time? That 5 represents the number of bits we're going to take from the host portion to create our subnet mask. I know how many subnets I'm going to have now. It's 32. But what is my default subnet mask for my network? It's the 5 bits added up with their decimal value. So let's get that default subnet mask. Remember our network address of 192.168.35. We have a default subnet mask of 255.255.255.0. That last octet of that default subnet mask to a computer reads all zeros. We know we're going to need to take five bits from the host portion, which is done from left to right. Since we're using the power of 2, we know that 2 to the fifth power gives us 32. We cannot use 2 to the fourth power. It only totals 16. We need 25 subnets. We go to the next higher value, which is 32, or 2 to the fifth power. And if you add those bits up from left to right with their decimal value, it will come out to be 248. We take the five bits we took to get 32 subnets, and we add up their decimal value from left to right. So the five bits taken are 128, 64, 32, 16, and 8, which equals 248 in decimal. And if you refer back to the chart, 
and we show the relationship of the numbers to the bit position, you can see how we got it. My default subnet mask for my network is 255, 255, 255, 248. We're almost home. I came up with the default subnet mask for my entire network. Now I have to come up with the correct number of hosts that I can have. Let's refer back to this wonderful power of 2 chart. Now remember, 2 to the 5th power represents 5 bits taken from the host from left to right. And if I take 2 and I multiply it by itself 5 times, it'll equal 32 as well. What does that leave me? Well, you remember our default mask was 248, but again, it's easier to see it in binary. I basically have the first five bits of the last octet reserved for my subnets. Now where am I going to get my host IPs? Just so happens I'm going to get those from the remaining three bits. So if you took the last three bits and basically used the power of two, two to the power of three equals eight. The first one's no good, the last one's no good. Therefore, I have a total possibility of six hosts per subnet. So now we've got to come up with an increment value so that I can come up with my subnet IPs. 192.168.35. something, right? Well, where am I going to get this from? Just take the 248, which is your default subnet mass, subtract it from 256, you come up with your increment. That increment represents the first subnet IP for your network. So it will always represent the value of the lowest network. And now we're not going to use zero networks because that basically represents the default broadcast for the entire network, which would be 192.168.35.0. We can't use that. First legal network that I can use. The first legal IP that I can use is 192.168.35.8. Let's take a look at it. So my first legal subnet address will be 192.168.35.8. My increment is 8. Just keep adding 8 to itself. 8 plus 8 is 16. 16 plus 8 is 24. 24 plus 8 is 32, and on and on and on till I get up to that last or the 30th subnet, which is 240. We'll discard the first and the last, which gives us 30 networks, with our subnet mask of 255, 255, 255, 248. Let's talk about why. The first actual subnet address is 192.168.35.0, which is the broadcast for the entire network. Not good and 192.168.35.248 would have 192.168.35.255 as a broadcast address for a subnet since all five bits would be turned on and that's no good either. They represent the first and the last IP subnet of the 32 possible. Take them away, you get 30. Take note that the host IPs fall within the range difference between the two subnets. And also note that it shows you that you can have a total possible of 8, but the first one is no good, and the last one is no good. So you have 6 legal host IPs per subnet. Now, this should all make good sense to you. It should all be coming to you right now. Now we're going to take a look at some, uh, some subnetting charts. Now these subnetting charts are basically designed to help you determine exactly where you're going to start with your mask and how many networks you're going to get and how many hosts per subnet you can have legally and how many bits you have to take from the host portion. This is a class A subnet chart, class B subnet chart, and of course the class C subnet chart. You may want to re remember the class C subnet chart and get used to writing it down. You can take that along with the power of 2, if you so desire, and go into the testing booth and then write it down. But look at the subnet bits. Doesn't that look just like the power of 2? 2 to the power of 5 equals 32. And over to the far right, you can see you've got 6 legal hosts, and even 
tells you what your default subnet mask is going to be for your network. So that just about concludes everything you need to know for subnetting and using the power of two. Now you want to work with this a few times and pretty soon it'll basically make sense to you and you won't have any problem figuring out a subnet mask for any type of network.